Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning study, the last morning study on, on um, Daniel's last vision of this week. We're going to start looking at verse 41, but before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? A dear, gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the time that we have to study together each morning. And we invite your spirit's presence to speak to our hearts, to give us a clear understanding and to help us in our daily battles in life. We know, Lord, that uh, the Christian life is a battle and a march. And we know that sometimes it can be overwhelming. But we just know, Lord, that you can give us peace in the midst of all of this strife. And so we ask for your peace to be here as we look at these scriptures addressing the events that are happening currently in this world that are bringing about uh, the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we ask for you, Holy Spirit, again, to speak to our hearts and to be guiding in this meeting and what we study and correcting us. And we pray this and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So we finished off verse 40 with the present truth application. And unless there's any questions, we're going to move on to verse 41. So I put the chart here in the paper that we had drawn out, tying some of these numbers together, which I thought was pretty fascinating. But we don't have everything in there. So, I, you know, when I end up putting the paper together, finishing it off, I'll probably add some more diagrams, but I'm not going to draw them right now. Now, in verse 41, when it says, um, he, papal Rome, shall enter into the glorious land, and many shall be overthrown. So countries is an added word. We cross it out there because I don't think it really belongs. Uh, many shall be overthrown, and we have many individuals will submit to Sunday legislation, but these shall escape out of his hand. That is, they're going to refuse to submit to Sunday legislation. Even Edom and Moab and the chief of the children of Ammon. And we put apostate Protestants who recognize the man of sin. So in this verse, this is specifically talking about the Sunday law in the United States. Do we agree with that? Is that what we've understood in the past? And this is the historic application. It, it seems pretty clear. We know with Edom, Moab, and Ammon, the chief of the children of Ammon, uh, that's going to be the topic of Ezekiel chapter uh, 25, I believe. And he's going to add in there Philistia, and then he's going to go through all these other nations. But these here would represent apostate Protestants. Now, why would Edom, Moab, and Ammon represent apostate Protestants? What What is the the symbol there? So if we look at Edom... It's the elder twin brother of Jacob that's referring to Esau, right? Uh, incestuous son of Lot. And, uh, and then Ammon is a son of Lot as well. So these are relatives. And so we can see how these relatives relate to the children of Israel, which is, so even though they're not northern Israel, which which also represents Protestantism. It represents people at the end of the world who are connected in some way uh, with the truth, but they're not part of papal Rome. So these are, are Protestants. That's what I understand. So it's apostate Protestants who, you know, maybe we shouldn't put them as apostate. We could put that they're just Protestants who recognize because in this case, they wouldn't be apostate. So maybe I should take apostate out of there. So we have Protestants who recognize the man of sin. And there are Protestants who do recognize the man of sin, right? They recognize the papacy. And many of these won't be deceived. They shall escape out of the hand of the papacy. Now we're saying, of course, he's entering into the glorious land. So this is the United States. So many shall be overthrown. We're just saying that that refers to individuals, but these shall escape. 
right? So these these nations. And any comments on the historic application here? So this is the historic application, but it's something that's still future, right? That is, it's it's the direct application of Daniel 11, verse 41. Now, we, we have already connected events within this movement to this time, right? So that is, we parallel what's ha- going to happen with what has happened in the movement. And what has happened in the movement is an external event, which we call the pandemic, that typifies the Sunday law and parallels the 777 days uh, that this movement has been given. So we know that that this is going to be continuous to what we had before. So Papal Rome is representing FFA. So if that's the case, if that's if what we said earlier, we, we could say that. So I'm, I'm not saying that that's uh, the correct way to look at it. I'm just saying that that's that seems to be from what we had done earlier uh, correct, but may not be. Um, and we know that this word enter five times 187. So just uh, kind of interesting in that way, you know, because uh, five times uh, 180 is 900 and five times seven is 35. Right. So that's why you get that 187 there. And so that is a symbol, uh, tells us something. So this is about the message of the separation. So the glorious land itself, USA, um, maybe we could put, you know, that FFA is the glorious land. I don't know. We could, we could actually put this as Parminder's movement being papal Rome entering into the USA being FFA. So that's another option. I don't know what people think about that. So we, we would, so we could put papal Rome because what we had here is that, um, but you know, we had atheistic communism. So I don't know if we would put Parminder as, as papal Rome because he's actually going to be the king of the South. So I don't, I don't know what, what is it that enters into the glorious land, into this movement, into FFA? You know, it's papal Rome, but what is papal Rome representing in this movement? Because is it a person? Is it an idea? Because the glorious land, maybe that's not FFA. Maybe that's something else. How, how would we sort this out? How would we dis- what, how would we distinguish papal Rome entering into the glorious land if we're looking at this movement internally? So, because we can't have FFA entering into FFA. So. One of these has to be FFA. Any ideas? Or is the glorious land something that's not FFA? Well, perhaps the ideas of papal Rome. You know, because that's what's yeah. ruining ruining the walk with God is adopting this these papal mandates and edicts. Like if you don't listen to us, if you don't accept what we're saying, then you're cut off, which is extremely papal and extremely uh, totalitarian, really. Yeah, and so so what we've I mean, seen... You cut yeah. off without being heard. We bring you to the in- Inquisition. You have no lawyers to defend you. You c- cannot defend yourself. And then we execute you. This is the, this is the mindset that's, that's adopted now. Yeah. This is how so, bad it's gotten. Yeah. So, so what we know here is in verse 40... This is the conflict between Parminder's movement and Jeff's movement, right? So Jeff's movement's going to defeat them. So it's Jeff's movement must be FFA. So I don't think the glorious land can be FFA. And definitely Parminder's movement's not part of this now. So FFA defeats the United States, is connected with, it, it's going to defeat the King of the South, but in so doing, right, the idea here is that Papal Rome enters into the glorious land. Right. That that's the idea here. In in the historic application, what's going to happen in the future? So when uh, we have the fall of the Soviet Union, that that's what's what's happening there. We're having the fall of the Soviet Union. Now we also have the idea that the that the Sunday Law is nine eleven. Now and we've already had 
we've we've connected to the idea that the United States is conquered at 9-11 by the UN. But this is talking in, in this application here. So so if we're looking at the historic application, it says he shall enter in also into the glorious land. Now, so we know that, that that's going to be 9-11, not 1989, right? Because this is talking about the Sunday law. So um, we would go here, historic, the historic application, he shall enter, uh, you know, I would put here at 9-11. There's a way in which uh, the papacy enters into the glorious land at 9-11, as the UN does. Okay, so so the papacy is connected here to 9-11. So that, so that part of the historical application of what's going to happen, this has happened, right? So the Sunday law began at 9-11 is what we're saying. I'm going to take this and put this as a footnote again, just because it doesn't make sense there. Okay, yeah, so, so we know there's this argument about the glorious land, that it's, it's a, a geographic location, not a church, right? So lots of people thought this was the Seventh-day Adventist church, and Jeff argues that it's not. This is the note by Ryan, um, that it's not the SDA church, that it's the United States, right? So, so that's what we have there, the glorious land being the USA. So I'm just going to put this footnote in. I have it up here as well, but I just put it again for anybody reading the footnotes. Okay, so we know this is the United States, that that is the glorious land. So how would then we relate that to the present truth application? Uh, what is the glorious land typifying within this movement? And does that make sense if we're going to take 9-11 there? In the historic application, wouldn't we put 11, 9, 19 there for the present truth application? Because those two mirror each other. But we're having at 9, 11, it doesn't make sense, FFA entering into the glorious land. Unless we, we have that glorious land representing some, some kind of message. Does that make sense? It represents the message of July 18, 2020. Does that make sense? I mean, does it? Or is it something else? Would it be a false religion in into the glorious land? Well, okay. So, well, here the glorious land is the United States historically. But we're looking at, at the period of time within this movement from November 9th, 2019 to December 21st, 2021. That, that's the idea, December 25th, 2021. That's the idea of what the Sunday law is. We get that from the verse before. The pandemic is going to parallel the 777 days in which the movement rejects the message of July 18, 2020. But this becomes a little bit tricky because we have this Sunday law, which is still future, but has begun at 9-11. And now we have the he being what we understand is being FFA, you know, entering into the glorious land. And so we have to say, well, what is the glorious land? Now, now the glorious land, historically, what, what's the purpose of the glorious land? What is its purpose? What is it representing? Those who want to be free to practice what they believe, unhindered by government or king. Okay, so when we look at it historically, the United States. Now, of course, the glorious land, that's not the first application of it, right? So when we deal with this word, the glorious land, Tisby, we're going to have it, uh, let me see, it, it's called the pleasant land, right, in Daniel 8, verse 9. So that's going to be Israel, right? It's not not the United States originally. Jeremiah 319, but I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, goodly heritage of the hosts of nations? Um, so that's a goodly heritage. I've just seen other applications, other verses. Sometimes refers to it. glorious beauty. Glorious beauty. And, and we had it in Daniel 11, verse 16 as well. You shall stand in the glorious land. You know, that's Israel. You have it in 41, 45. 
So the first references we have to the glorious land is in Daniel chapter 8. Right? So that's going to be where we have that direct. It's going to be called the pleasant land. Right? So out of one of them came forth a little horn which waxed exceeding great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land. So if that's the case... So we have this this land, the glorious land. You know, it's the promised land as well, right? So he shall enter into the glorious land. So we're saying that's the USA. In But what would that represent? Like Rome, the question is, when does Rome first enter into the glorious land historically? Is that is that Daniel chapter 8? The south, the east, and the pleasant land. Of the glorious land and he waxes great even to the host of heaven so so we should be able to see what happens with the papacy at the beginning is is typifying what what happens at the sunday law so the papacy entering into the glorious land here the glorious land has to be this place one is it that it protects them but it it's it has to be some kind of message i don't know if the message of july 18 2020 is the message that it enters into, if you understand what I'm saying. So how else could we parallel this glorious land? Well, when did the U.S. depart from its official anti-Catholic stance? If we want to go back that far, I mean, yeah, I would like to read. I'm not talking about the U.S. No, yeah. Okay. I mean, well, when no, did, no, when no, did no. the movement officially, <laughs> we know, <laughs> officially uh, retract like a, Oh, back to papal fallacies and embrace them. Yeah, but this isn't just about the beginning of this, right? This is specifically the Sunday law. So we would have to say, you know, that this occurs at 9-11 in the historical application, right? That this is when this happens. And we parallel it to November 9th, 2019. At least that's what we've done here. And if that's the case... But we're saying that papal Rome is FFA, which is kind of a tough thing to say, right? Because we're not, we're just saying that a certain aspect of what FFA has done that parallels this. And, and I don't know if I'm completely satisfied with just putting FFA there, but FFA does in this context of verse 40 in the application, it's the king of the north that defeats the king of the south. Yeah, in a sense, it's uh, papal Rome. And the reason why we have papal Rome and not the United States entering into the glorious land is because, well, the glorious land is the United States, right? So there's this distinction there. So when we look at Revelation 17, for instance, uh, so let's go there. Just So in Revelation 17, we know this is the third beast, that is um has seven heads and ten horns. And we have, you know, the first beast, which is pagan Rome in Revelation 12. And then in Revelation 13, we have this composite beast, which is papal Rome. And then we look at the beast of Revelation 17. And the beast itself is not the papacy. Correct? Right? So we know that this this beast, the scarlet colored beast, is dis- distinct from the woman herself that the woman is the papacy, that she sits upon these seven heads, which are seven mountains, representing Rome, right, the Vatican. So this woman is in Rome. Right? That's, that's what we understand from Revelation 17. We spent a lot of time going through this. And she's committing fornication with the kingdoms of the world, right, with the kings of the earth, which is this beast represents so we're, 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 we're doing this here in Daniel 11, verse 41, because we have really the king of the north is the United States and the papacy together. But now here we're going to see this distinction between the papacy and the USA in the historical application of Daniel 11, verse 40. So we have this papal Rome entering into the glorious land. So it's it's representing this relationship in the historical application where the United States is going to make an image 
to the beast, right? That's the Sunday law. And that, and that we would have to mark beginning at 9-11. So, so it enters in at 9-11. And then, and then it's going to be followed by the Sunday law. Right. So it's the mighty angel of Revelation 18 coming down at 9-11. And, and the message of Revelation 18, Babylon has fallen, come out of her, my people. Okay. <clears throat> so this is talking about uh, this history in the United States. So I, I don't know how else to put it except papal Rome shall enter into the glorious land. But is there some other way we could characterize this historical application? Or is that sufficient? And if that's sufficient, we would have to have FFA parallel that within this movement. Because we're not going to have, you know, he be a message. But the glorious land, which is a geographical location, can symbolize a message. So, so the idea is that some Something comes into this message of July 18th. That is, FFA is going to begin promoting the message of July 18, 2020. But we're saying, well, when that happens, so the message is the glorious land. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. But FFA has entered into that, taken up this message in some way. And that is paralleled by uh, the Sunday law legislation in the future, but also paralleled uh, with the pandemic, right? So it typifies, I guess, the Sunday law legislation in the future. But we have this pandemic in here. Now, you know, it's not that people submitted to, uh, you know, the pandemic. That's not uh, the problem here because, you know, when we talk about the pandemic as a type of the Sunday law, as a test, and, and we don't want to go into the details of, of all those problems, uh, you know, all the sort of conspiracy theories about that, whether, you know, some are true or some aren't. Um, that's not really the issue here. The question, the question is, how do we, how do we parallel what has happened with the pandemic with what has happened in the movement? How is that a parallel? Is it just that there is authority being exercised that is not really authority that's been given? Is, is that the problem? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, so, um, the vaccines, they're going to be started to be given in 2020, right? In December of 2020? Oh, they arrive. I remember seeing that Pfizer plane arrive. And- yeah, late, very late 2020, but they didn't and start the man, until. And then the mandates are going to begin in 2021, though, in December of 2021. Oh, they were given before then, I think. Because people were being fired for not taking them. I was saying, give them a notice of liability, threaten a lawsuit, stand on your no, right. Well, yeah, don't worry about that. It's just when is that, is the question, not the details of it. I mean, according to Odilio, he has it that this is going to be in, uh, I think he has it in what, November of 2021. He's going to have the mandates begin when it's enforced. I'm just looking at his slide here. All right. So it's going to be January 4th, 2022, that there's this enforcement or empowerment of the mandate. Uh, he pl- compares that with the Blair Bill in 1888 that did not pass. But I, but the first vaccines I think are given in December of 2020. And then, and then the mandates are going to begin later. So they're going to get through. And, and part of that is that, you know, by the spring of 2020, everything kind of relaxes for, for a time, right? You know, we, we can do things again in the summer. And then, and then in the fall of 2021, then there comes this push. Um, I'll just show you the slide I'm looking at here. Right. So, so he's just talking about, uh, from November 9th to patient zero, uh, the d- declaration of the pandemic on March 11th in 2020. We see the second way mark connected to July 18 by one, one, uh, 18,000, 
1,872,000 minutes, right? From then that is from March 11th to July 18 is 130 days. So that's how he gets that. Uh, then he has from patient zero to um, November 4th, uh, the declared vaccine mandate, 718 days. And then he has from patient zero to January 4th, 4th, that's 780 days. So that's going to be 18,720 hours. And then patient zero is 1117. And of course, 11 times 17 is 187. So, so we take this as valid. So what, what Delia did with this chart, we accept as valid. It, it makes sense. So it's something that parallels this message, right? All the way to, um, right? And so he just says that these are encompassed within these, these periods of time. Right. So December 21st, 2021 is in the middle of these two spots. Uh, there is the eight days from November 9th to the 17th. Right. So he's just connecting, uh, this to the 777 structure. Right. And then he takes, uh, 780 days and 777 days, multiplies them together. You get six, 606 million and 60. Right. And then we have minutes, hours, days, and then hour, day, month, year, these connections. We're going to get that 1629 symbol, uh, which he's going to deal with. So there was a bunch of stuff there that we've addressed in the past. So he's going to make some connection here with the woes, the sub-woes, 9-11 to July 18th. So he's got these, that the third woe, encompasses uh, three steps, he calls them sub-woes, which some of the stuff I don't agree with that he did, but anyway, yeah, so we leave all that. This number was interesting, and he looks at uh, some verses that have, have that and the words and so forth, so I'm not going to go into all this. Uh, the point is we can, we can make this parallel, right? So we can say that... Maybe it's just that it is the message of the 777 days. Maybe that's what that is. Any thoughts on that? I know it's a lot to think about, but it would make sense that we're entering into that 777 days on November 9th, 2019. And that parallels the pandemic. Any other thoughts on that? And so if many shall be overthrown, we have three, seven, I don't know what this is doing. I'm trying to get this computer to do something. It's not doing anything the one I'm sharing from. I can't share what I want to share. Okay. So one of the things we can see here that's interesting is if we add many shall be overthrown together. So we add these numbers, seven, two, two, seven, and 3782. So do it this way. Put the there. <clears throat> so if we have H7227 and 3782, you're going to, so if you add them together, we get an interesting number. Anybody know what that is? So you get 11,009. Does that look interesting? Extremely. Okay. So, so it ties us to that November 9th date, as well as 9-11, but to the November 9th in the present truth application. Now, now we had a, a period of time that was 11,900 days, which deals with the Islamic calendar. This is 11,009 days, but still has the symbols there. It ends up being a period of 30 years and 51 and a half days or 51 or 52, depending on probably where you, where you place it, where you start. Now we know we have the 30 years going to, uh, November 9th, right? So November 9th. And then if you're going to have, uh, 30 years plus 51 or 52 days. So if we went from November 9th, 1989, 
and we're going to count 11, 0, 0, 9, it's going to bring us 55 days past November 9th. So we know 30 days would be like December 9th. But this brings us to the last day of this of 2019. So it brings us to uh, December 31st, 2019. Or if we counted from the end of November 9th, 1989, it would bring us to January 1st. So which which date would be which date should we use here? Now, as far as as those dates on uh, the biblical calendar. We have January 1st is the fifth day of the 10th month. And we know the fifth day of the 10th month is the date in which the escapee from the destruction of Jerusalem arrives and, 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 uh, speaks and Ezekiel's mouth is opened, right? And Ezekiel prophesies. So he tells him of the destruction of Jerusalem. On the Mayan calendar, the last three digits are 727 which of course could relate to the 7227. And of course, January 1st is the first day of the first month. So I would prefer that uh, we do this, what we call an exclusive count. So January 1, 2020. No idea why it's saying that spelled wrong. Okay, does that make sense? So we're going to say it's this exclusive count from 11989. I think that's pretty significant. And we know that, you know, 9-11 is also a symbol of the first day of the first month when the second angel arrives in 1844. So, okay. Now, if we were to take that exclusive count mm -hmm. from 9-11, 2001, where does it, where does it place us? Well, that's going to bring us into 2031. Okay. All right. Yeah. And they're actually to 2032, it's going to, well, no, 2031, it'd be September, it'd be like the beginning of December in 2031. So, so I think that that makes the most sense. It ties all these different symbols together. It works. And, and, and sometimes I do the exclusive count for November 9th, 1989, because it's actually at the end of the day that, that, you know, the, the wall is open, right? Not at the beginning of the day, but we always count November 9th because that's the event. We don't call it November 10th. Nobody ever does. But it's really at the at the beginning of November 10th, the end of the November 9th that that occurs. Okay, so so this many shall be overthrown is going to tie us to that symbol. So that is there's something that comes in the message of the 777 days. Internal events in movement are paralleled by the external events of the pandemic. So that is what happens in the present truth. And that is going to be the exercise of control. Now, we know when, when we get to January 1st, 2020, what it marks is January 1st, 2020. It, it, there's not anything that I know of particularly other than it's the first day of the first month on our calendar. And it's the, uh, I should put there in the note that it's the 10th day or the fifth day of the 10th month. So, just, so that's going to be the escapee, right? So that there is a, uh, a message coming in that year, in the year 2020, uh, that's going to be, um, you know, the message of July 18th is obviously is going to be there. Um, but really it's, it's a message within the movement that brings about this division of the movement. We know when we get uh, to December uh, 6th, 2020, we're going to have, you know, FFA, basically kick people out, right? So that's going to happen. So then we're going to say, but these shall escape out of his hand, um, refuse to submit to Sunday legislation. So this is more about in this movement. But these, so we got four, two, eight, shall escape. 
escape is 4422. Two. And then his hand, the word hand is 3027. Um, this 4480 is just to means um, come out of, right? So out of his hand. Um, but, uh, or from his hand. <clears throat> And then we have what they are, Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. So we got uh, Edom, one, two, three, Moab, uh, four, one, two, four, and then the chief of the children of Ammon. So the chief being uh, seven, two, two, five, and uh, the children, one, one, two, one, and then Ammon, five, nine, eight, three. So we got these different Hebrew words. So we don't just have Edom, Moab, Ammon. We got Edom, Moab, and the chief of the children of Ammon. Now, Edom is interesting because of, it's just the number one, two, three, which represents what? What does one, two, three represent? Three angels. Okay, so it can be a message, right? Um, and you also have Edom, Moab, and Ammon, right? So you have three that are represented here. And in the first is represented all three. Of course, the idea of one, two, three, just counting, right? So we have, so we have chronology or numbers, right? Now, Edom is, of course, uh, Esau, right? So, uh, the brother of Jacob. And then we have the Moabites and, uh, the Ammonites, children of Lot. Of incest, incestuous child of Lot, and he's four one two four. So I don't know what to do with these numbers per se. Uh, interesting about, thing about this verse is um, so just uh, some things on the, the Bible Indexer. The lexical sum is five zero two nine six. It's the eight hundred and sixty first Bible chapter. And the 329th reverse Bible chapter. So the 329 is the number of days from October 13th to um, uh, September 7th. The reverse, or the sum is 15, 1586, and the reverse sum, the matrix is 2329 combined, they're 3915. So, so if we take the gematria of this verse, the reverse sum, and the com- and the sum, you combine them, they're 3915, which is interesting. Um, and, and we know that there's a certain pattern of when you take these reversed and combined sums, because they, in a sense, kind of cancel out each other. They, there's only certain numbers that you can produce. I can't remember, uh, how, you know, how that works exactly, but 39, 3915, is common, that is, it's not that uncommon that we have verses, uh, the gematria of that sum, right? The combined sum. I think that, or is, no, it's the other way around. I think it's the differential one that's, never mind, it, the combined one doesn't cancel itself. Ron, do you remember how that works? It's well, the for, differential. For combined, cancels. if you, you just have to have 145 characters because it's by, multiplied by 27. Okay, so it just has to do with the number of characters? Uh, for the combined. So the combined is the one that kind of cancels itself out. It's just that there's fewer options. Right, yeah, there's fewer options. So there, yeah, okay. So it's always going to be divisible by 27, you're saying? Yeah. Okay. So, so 3915 is divisible by 27. 145 times. Okay. So, so it's always going to be divisible by 27. So that means it's always multiples of 27. The combined, right? So there's less options, I guess. So you, you're going to find it, it fairly common that you're going to have verses that have a combined, uh, reverse sum, or combined sum of 3915. And it's, it's simply just, has to do with the numbers. Now, it's not going to be the most common, but it's going to be, it's not uncommon. 
So the 50296, which is the lexical sum, is 137 years and you know, basically eight months. So I don't know of anything connected to that. Yeah, it's not going to connect to anything that I know of. Yeah, I can't think of anything connected to that. Okay, so just we're going to have to look at some of those numbers a bit later. So if we're going to have uh, Eda, Moab, and Ammon, we have three things that are going to escape out of the hand of Papal Rome, this message in FFA. Now, would this refer to three different points in history in this movement, like divisions that occur within the movement in that 777 days are connected to that in some way? Is it it a could, when I was looking at, at Edom or Esau, well, he lost his blessing. Even later, he repented, but he couldn't regain it. He, and then the, the, the daughters of Lot, they were fearing that they would have no offspring unless they lay with their father. So there's an incestuous thing that there. And I thought, well, how does that, that, how does that, that compare with what we're going through, what we have gone through? Well, Lot, if you could look at him as referring to the old paths, let's return to the old paths because that's our only hope to progress, to procreate, so to speak. Or you can look at it in a, in a bad way. I, I don't know. I'm trying to see both sides. It's a lot of thinking. <laughs> okay. So what if we have Edom, Moab, and Ammon represent like November 9th, July 18th, and December 25th, 2021? Is there any way that we could uh, connect these? They're all way marks that seem to be unfulfilled. Um, okay. So these are the, the tests. They, they would represent the tests and the people that fail those tests. So there are going to be people that leave the movement on November 9th, 2019, or connected with that. Because there are some people waiting, in spite of the fact that Jeff is saying nothing's going to happen. There are people in the movement that when nothing happens on November 9th, 2019, they leave the movement. Right, they're just going to abandon. Um, one is they didn't want to have anything to do with time setting, and Jeff is going to now accept July 18, 2020, at that time, and and they don't want to have anything to do with it, so they leave the movement. After July 18, 2020, many people leave the movement. Now there's going to be a delay there, um, so some people leave right away when the prediction doesn't happen. They just leave the movement. There's people who just no contact anymore. They don't show up at any studies. They just have no interest. And then that's going to, you know, precipitate out until December 6, 2020. Right. So finally, FFA leaves the movement. Uh, but then we have the chief of the children of Ammon. Right. So we're going to just say that, that that is Moab. That's the incest, incestuous relationship. Uh, the Moab. But the chief of the children of Ammon, so the symbols here, now the word chief here is Rashid. Now that comes from the word Rosh. The word Rosh is 7218, right? So it comes from that number that relates to July 18, 2020, right? And it's seven digits more, right? So 7225 is just July 18, 2020, or July 218 is 7218, plus 7 is 7225. I guess I can show you this, right? So you'll see it here, right? Um, if I go here, so there's the word chief, and there's the dictionary, right? So you can see it comes from 7218. Related word. And you can see how that relates to July 18, 2020. But it's seven more than that number. Okay. So that's chief. Now, now the children of Ammon, this is going to be Ben, right? So it's a sign of grandchild, child, child member, right? So what, what would this symbolize? 
if we're going to say that this is the third one. So we have uh, the symbol of July 18, 2020, plus seven days or seven, seven added to it. Then we have uh, 1121. And somebody have a thought on that? We are the offspring of those who are keeping the keeping the you know, the faith or, or whatever you want to call it right. to seven eighteen twenty. We persist in believing in the old past and persist in believing what how God has led us. Yeah, but within this movement, those are going to be that pass the third test, the December twenty fifth, twenty twenty one test, is what I'm saying. So the children, these are relations, the chief of the children of Ammon. You know, and the idea of chief, right, just because it comes from that word rosh, which means first, beginning, best, chief, choice, part, right? So so you have the chief of the children of Ammon. So you got the children, it means all those different things. And then you have Ammon itself, which means tribal, right? The people dwelling in Transjordan descended from Lot through Ben Ammai, right? From seven five nine seven one, um, right, which means people. So it's really. I have a friend named Ami who's from Israel. It means my people, right? So Am, um, Amon, just means a people. Um, if I add the children of Ammon, so I don't put the chief in there, but just the children of Ammon together, five nine eight three and one one two one. Um, I get 7,104, and that's a period of 19 years and 164 and a quarter days. Any, anybody understand the significance of 164 and a quarter? Doubled, it's 328 and a half, which is similar to 329. The number of days between uh, October 13th and September 7th, but I don't know if that's significant or not. If we count from 9/11, it brings us to February 22nd, 2021. Um, February 22nd, Sandus publication of Sandus Snow's first letter in the Midnight Cry, but I don't see anything significant there. So just looking at these symbols. So let's. Um, so if we're going to say that these represent uh, these messages, I, I haven't found anything particular other than, you know, the chief that that relates to. I'll do it this way. So this is just H7225 from H7218. With the difference of seven. Okay, so we got the July 18, 2020 symbol in there, plus seven in that number. Anything else that people can see here? So if we're going to just add in what this is, I know people are thinking just like I am. I don't have anything for the 1121 or the 5983 really yet. But if we're gonna, we're gonna say that these are these messages. So we're gonna say Edom represents 11.9.19, the present truth application. Moab represents uh, July 18, 2020. And the chief of the children of Ammon equals December 25th, 2021. So that's that's what we've we're, we're saying. It has to do with these messages. So there might be something here that we're missing. I mean, it's pretty likely that we're still missing things. Um, if we take we add all of these together, that is, if we add um, the chief of the children of Ammon together, so this is going to be seven two uh, H. H7225 plus H1121 plus H5983. And that's going to be that 14,329. And the sum of the divisors of this number 
equals 17280, which gives us all the digits of July 18, 2020. So whether that's significant <clears throat> or not, so for people to decide. But we, we seem to have these these tied to the symbols of dealing with July 18, 2020. Amen. Now, um, now with Moab, so Moab has this number of 4124. I don't know the significance of that number at all. It's just like whether there's anything there. From what my analysis of the number doesn't mean anything. As far as if we had it as a span of time, that's going to be 11 years and 106 and a quarter days. So roughly three and a half months. So 11 years. Now, so where would we mark that in this movement? 4124 is from the Mayan 13000 is April 6, 2024, which is the Sabbath a couple few weeks ago. The Sabbath coming up, it'll be three Sabbaths earlier. So I don't know if that's significant. Maybe we could look at what JP was teaching on that day. On on January 6th. Uh, on on yeah. April 6th. Yeah, April 6th, I meant, yeah. We could. Um, I know it's going to be connected with, uh, obviously, Jeff is presenting on that day, so I can't remember which one that was, April 6th, which which message that was. I can't remember if that's the one where he first says we need to ban people. No, it could be. Yeah, so that might be. I think it was there, though. Yeah, I think it was. I think it's the one where he said that. Now, if we go from where an FFA first received the $165,000 to start the School of the Prophets, and you count uh, 4124 days, it's going to bring us to October 6, 2022. I don't know if there's any significance in that date other than it's the 10th day of the seventh month on the biblical calendar. And it's September 23rd on the Julian. So I don't know. But anyway, there's some things we're still going to have to examine in, in finishing these present truth applications when we come to this next week. So yesterday was more to, more the summary of, of verse 40. Now we're starting to look at verse 41. So we can see that these these symbols tie us to these, but maybe there are different dates than actually these three dates. I don't know. So maybe uh, the chief of the children of Ammon um, is going to refer to more after December 25th, 2021, rather than December 25th, 2021 itself. But I have to think about that. Okay. So uh, let's close in prayer. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for the study today. Even though it was slow, we know, Lord, that we had time to think. And we pray for the study tomorrow evening and the ones on Sabbath. And we pray for each person in this group and those studying. Uh, please be with us. Help us to trust fully in you in all things. And please guide and direct our paths. Uh, we pray for our family members, that your angels can watch over them, and that we can be faithful in the little things that you give us to do each day. And we pray this in Jesus' name.